almost dying. That changes you. Oh, I have a strong mind. It's stronger than any part of my body. My comedy is, is a storytelling, mostly. It's about me. It's, I just happen to be a three-foot-something disabled person. I became a disability advocate by accident. By living my life. I was that weird four-year-old kid that if you asked, what do you want to be when you get older? And I said, I want to be a comedian. I remember hearing him say that and noting myself that I want to remember this moment. Because how often does a four-year-old say that they want to be a comedian? Okay, we wanted him to, to take accounting. I know what you're all thinking. The answer is yes. I am Portuguese. <laughs> I know a lot of people think I'm like Scottish or German or leprechaun. Hey, you old leprechaun! My name is Andre Giruda, and the H, to answer your question, stands for hero. Because that's what everyone calling me ever since I was featured in a harassment video that went viral a while ago. Following that viral video showing what it's like for a woman to walk around New York City, a Toronto comedian decided to do something similar. You just have to ignore all that negativity out there against you. Hey, can you tie my shoes, man? And you have to keep fighting. You can't give up. If people give up and just stay in closed doors and scared of the world, you lose. I've tried to imagine the world from Andre's eyes occasionally and just thought, holy crap, what if everything was three feet too tall for me? I don't feel disabled. I don't have a disability until I'm confronted with someone that says, well, you can't get in here or you can't do this because of your height. That's the only time I feel disabled. I've been doing stand-up for about 15 years now. And when I first started doing comedy, someone came up to me and was like, you know, you're funny, but there are people up there who get nervous when they see disabled people in public. <laughs> really? if there are people out there who get nervous when they see disabled people in public, those assholes shouldn't be in public. <laughs> We're fucking everywhere. <laughs> we are the minority of every minority. Your negative perception about my life, I care as much about that as I do about why C-3PO had a red arm in The Force Awakens, really, it doesn't matter. No one cares. And that's how I approach life. Uh, now, if you don't know who Tollies are, they're you. Uh, <laughs> Tollies are obsessed with labeling me based on my height. Like, this is a regular conversation that goes like, so, uh, what do we call you? Dwarf? Little person? Midget? Human being! He is a good example of truism in comedy, which is the thing that you are most vulnerable to. That's your secret weapon. I gotta tell you that I think 90% of this room is disabled. I'm not being insulting, that's a true statistic. I just pulled out of my ass right now, and uh, that's because I get disabilities, you know? You know, people could be uh, dyslexic, or they could be suffering from extreme anxiety, or they could be voting for Trump. You have no idea. Just by looking at someone, I, I don't know what to say to a person who just tells me they're lactose intolerant. See, I, I'm a three foot something asthmatic redhead who wears hearing aids and drives a mobility scooter, but at least I could eat cheese, you know? <laughs> Dude, that's rough. <laughs> Every once in a while, there'll be people going, I can't laugh at him. I'll go to hell. <laughs> it's like, no, you won't. <laughs> this is my job. If you don't laugh at me, you'll go to hell. I was very blessed to be born with an amazing family. Hey, what? Hey. Did you have a good trip? Yeah, it was a good trip. Good, good. Nice. Car. Yeah, nice yeah. to see you. Hey, you came a little early. That's yeah. it. Andre, it was... Um... Well, it's going back a long time, but he was a good baby and had a really cool laugh. We took him to the doctor because his bottom two ribs on either side were flared. 
in a very unusual way. I suspected Morchio disease because of the nature of this deformity. It affects um, one in 250,000 people, so it's quite rare. It's affected virtually all of his bones, including his long bones and his spine. And this actually interferes with mobility because they have to use that much more strength to keep their legs straight. And they're high risk for acute paralysis below the neck. The neck fusion operation that Andre had was a serious operation. At that time, most of these children didn't live past their teens. We were um, sad. We take this as, this is our challenge. He was always like, no way, I don't have these disadvantages. I can do what you can do. He was the one that uh, you need to watch out for when you babysat. He was a social butterfly. He was all over the neighborhood, knocking on people's doors for the kids to come out and play. Um, Always. <laughs> he was never bullied. He was always the star. It was like an aura about him that people just really loved him. My first memories of drama and Andre are he would do anything, try anything. You hit worse than a kid in a wheelchair. <laughs> we are kids in a wheelchair. <laughs> I'm 17 years old and I don't know how to fake a fist fight, so I actually punched myself in the face. I had this huge goose egg with like a trickle of blood on it. And I stopped and I said, I just beat the crap out of myself. <laughs> and everyone just stood up and started applauding me. And that was the first applause break that I've gotten for anything. You're a better comedian now, but you still had all of the talent that you needed back then. Thank you. Thank you very much. That means so much coming from you. And when he was like 19 and saying, you know what, I'm going to be a comedy writer and I'm going to go to Humber College and I'm going to move out. I was like, I have no doubt that you're going to succeed at this. Certainly, I never doubted that he'd have a career in comedy. To me, it just seemed like a certainty. It's a terrible career choice because it's so hard and he's done it. Despite the fact that literally getting to the comedy club for him is a friggin' epic Homer-esque <laughs> odyssey. You mean you're not too, uh, feeling too welcome with the yeah. metal death trap that we put no, you in? No, no. Okay. Do we need a third floor? Probably. Second floor, my bad. Taking you on full tour. I don't think this is the place either. No? No. But I'm not ashamed to admit that I look pretty damn adorable holding a ukulele. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately a ukulele does not get me laid. It gets me ice cream. <laughs> a lot of the clubs that we work in, the bathrooms are downstairs, and I can't do with stairs. Yeah, no, I've carried him up almost everything. Well, how do you want me to, and I remember I went to Cradle, he's like, no, don't do that. <laughs> I was just like. There's no Toronto comedians that haven't carried Andre somewhere. But we do not want to be the guy who dropped Andre. That will be on your tombstone. Like, guy dropped Andre, it's like, Ooh, fuck that guy. You don't, really don't um, know how independent you are until that's taken away from you. After my 30th birthday, I woke up with my left leg feeling unnaturally cold. How fucking scared was I? Holy shit. The next three years, I'm like going from like doctor to doctor, having tests, x-rays, MRIs, CAT scans. I get a call, 7.30 at night. Hello, Andre? has never called me 7.30 at night, or at all. I'm looking at your MRI right now. You have a spinal compression. Basically, you're gonna need to have surgery, or you can become paralyzed from the waist down. Then finally, I was referred to a surgeon. His name, Dr. Failings. <laughs> I wish I was making that up. That's like going on a Caribbean cruise and finding out the guy in charge of the boat is Captain Shipwreck. <laughs> the implications for Andre were profound because without surgery he would uh, inevitably have lost his mobility. But then I thought, wait a minute, if your name is Failings and you go to medical school, I can't think of a better motivation to becoming the best damn doctor <laughs> in the world. In one breath he told me the news and in the next breath he told me how great it's going to be for all the stand-up material he's going to have. <laughs> let's laugh at this. Let's make fun of every horrible thing that, that's going on and with myself or the world or whatever. I knew that there would be a change in my life for better or for worse after surgery. It's like a huge team. I had not realized that it was 
going to be that big a deal, and it was. And they went nine or ten hours. When I saw the initial post of straight out of surgery, laughed so hard, you know, typical Andre, and then... Uh, at night, I got pneumonia. I stopped breathing. I saw him go blue and dead. I heard that and I suddenly I just imagined a world without Andre. Like I was just, I, c I couldn't breathe. My heart just sank into my stomach. It was really, really scary. And I would go to like comedy rooms and I just would break down on stage. Andre's supposed to be fine. He was fine. What happened? We thought he was going to die. That was frightening. That was my dark hour. That month was just like one nightmarish blur. I think I'll be able to walk again. It'll take a long time. Everyone has their own obstacles they have to overcome. And mine are different, and probably there's more than the average person. But I have so many things I want to do, and I'm not going to stop until I finish them. When I get discharged, my goal is to get back to stand-up. I am very familiar with grilled cheese, just not making it. <laughs> so where's the oven? Make sure you hold on to the pan while you do it. Next stop, Top Chef Canada. Freedom! I was six weeks at Toronto Western and then another six weeks at Lindhurst. Three months in total, bedridden. I was pretty apprehensive when we walked through that door. Okay, Andrew. Welcome home. You're home. I think we're in the wrong apartment. This place is too clean. We did spend a lot of time getting it this place. It's going to take a lot of time for me to get it back to its messy. So. No, you don't have the energy now to mess no, it up. No, you're right. <laughs> I am uh, I'm going to park. There you go. I'm going to figure out how we can keep this handy here for you. It's hard enough when he could do some walking. No, you can't do any walking. I'm not sure how this is going to work. I understand you're worried. Hey, I'm a little concerned too. I'm not saying I'm fully confident. Being all by yourself, it's a different story. I know. It's going to be tough, but I'll make it work. My biggest challenge is right now is trying to regain the strength of my legs. I can barely walk. starting out outpatient therapy. He has a lot of arthritis and pain in his knees, and so that has been the main limiting factor for him to be able to walk hands-free. Yeah, nice. Come all the way up, try not to pull with your hands. There you go, nice. I need motivation, but this oh, almost dying made me realize that that's the motivation, that I'm still alive and I'm still able to do a lot of things. Two, nice, and one more, good. Wow, this is a lot easier now than it was a couple months ago. Yeah. My leg just keeps spasming. What's that called again? Clonus. <laughs> My leg's been possessed by the evil alien Clonus. Yeah. <laughs> My goal is to stand for my birthday. I'm turning 33, and why not just make this birthday about celebrating that I survived surgery? Hey, everybody! I'm fucking alive! Yeah! It was a great feeling because there was a chance that I wouldn't be able to stand. And uh, spoiler alert. Motion. Oh! It was my way of saying thank you and going, it's okay, everyone. Alive. I'm, I'm back. There are people that when they fall, they don't get up. He falls and he jumps up. There's so many things I want to do. I want to produce my own TV show one day. I like to produce my own movie. Will I write a book someday? Sure, why not? <laughs> Hollywood, are you listening? Give me a call. Don't assume that just because someone has these physical challenges, that they don't have many gifts to give. I think the worst anyone can do is ignore me. You know, to, to ignore me because I'm different or to, to not even acknowledge that I have a purpose. You should look at Dre and think, wow, if that guy can do it, then I need to just pull my finger out of my ass. People are always saying like, oh yeah, you're my hero, man, that's awesome. To me, hero is a completely different thing. 
What does make him a hero is the effect that he has on others. You don't have to be a full-size person to be a hero. You just have to have a full-size heart. I'm not going to take a bullet for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not a hero. I'm just a human. Andre is a testament to human potential. The legacy that he leaves is living a life of possibilities. He's so great because um, he's like Luke Skywalker in Star Wars. I genuinely believe we all have that level of, of Dre in us to be able to go, nah, hell with this, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna live. The cardinal thing to remember is never underestimate Andre Aruda. You just wanna watch this guy and you don't know what he's gonna do next. One of my goals is to one day star in a movie where Tom Hanks and Bill Murray are my two gay dads. If there's something you want to do, go do it. Figure out how to do it and do it. Don't wait. I'm not always going to be here. And whoever's watching this is not always going to be there. So go out and do what you need to do. Mm -hmm.